Okay, we're uh, we're back with uh, another half hour with uh, Sebastian Roberts. You're going to love this this uh, half hour because we're going to talk about a lot of things. A lot of secrets are going to come out here, but we're going to start. <laughs> he's looking. Not he's looking give you at secrets. me. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start with what, what what actually was the prequel to the book we just talked about. This is the and the title of this book. Is weak point and just yeah just set yeah that weak, up. weak point is book four we just talked about serenity which is book five right and the the one two and three uh, are 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 ones that are set earlier so weak point is a bridge between when uh, we talked about Harold well and and Valerie well their parents are in one two and three okay and so weak point uh, essentially does a couple of things but it introduces the fact that. The parents had one kid named Harold, and the parents had another kid named Valerie, right. and that Janice moved into the neighborhood. Right. And most importantly, it introduces the fact that at this point in time, somewhere around 1982, 1983, the U.S. intelligence service is getting very nervous about uh, about foreign terrorism and, and its ability to come to the United States. Okay. And, and the job that the people have who are now in the witness protection... Uh, and, and the program are what are these things that the that the terrorists can do and how can they stop that uh, and and so I have a couple of questions okay. for you uh, well first of all they just sat around and tried to decide which what they thought was was the biggest problem they might well this face. is this is what a think tank does right you take a bunch of people who at least think they're smart and you say all right if you were going to blow up the Eiffel Tower, how would you do it? And by asking that question of friendly people, then the people who are there to protect the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty or the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever can start to develop countermeasures before the threat occurs. Okay. So these guys now, their job is to think of all the different ways that they can create havoc and terrorize the American public. Right. Okay. All right. That's what they're That's doing. That's it. Okay. Now, you, you as an author, but as the characters, they come up with some scary things that that can happen, and and then they t- they try them out. And there's one where they actually do it with cheese, which I thought was kind of an interesting uh, <laughs> part. And, and 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 they, I guess, they do this. Yes. Okay. I mean, you mean you mean the characters are real think real, people. Real people. Real people will do it um, depending upon the uh, the nature of the situation. Okay. So you can you know a think tank or you know war gaming is the other thing you call it, and and, and you you set it up and you see if it's going to work, and if there's any kind of uncertainty, you know, then then you might go ahead and try it. Okay. All right. But you try it in a way that doesn't really cause a problem. You just try it in a way that proves your theory. To, that it so that's work. what the cheese does. Okay. The cheese is a substitute for a poison. Right. So if they can get people to eat the cheese, then they prove that they can get people to eat the poison. Okay. Now, what this brought to mind was because we just had um, the Super Bowl. Yeah. And one of the things that they're looking at is what would happen if some there was some huge uh, uh, sporting goods or, sp- or sporting event or whatever. Right. How would how would it be attacked, and could would it? be okay i mean would they in fact be able to blow up half of a stadium the 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 current discussion on those kinds of things the the current uh things that you see on the radio or the television are mostly focused on big damage items i'm going to blow up a school i'm going to blow up a mall i'm going to blow up a ball game okay um but the fact is that those things are not only harder to do, they're they're easier to detect. Okay. So if you have an airplane with a bomb flying over the top of the stadium, there are people in fighter jets who are there to make sure that airplane doesn't fly over the stadium. Right. Things okay. like that. Okay. So if you're a little more subtle about it, and the, the big difference here is if you, if you blow up a stadium, you're going to kill a lot of people. Right. If you... You can do other things, though, that may not kill people, but might frighten them into inactivity. Okay. Uh, there is a, a conclusion, actually. I don't know whether you want to mention this, but there is a conclusion at the end of this this uh, book that they say, can you stop these terrorists? And the answer is 
The answer is no. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's, I mean, there, there, the the things that the things that my think tank comes up with are so um, mundane right. that in order to in order to stop them all, you'd have to arrest everybody. Right. Okay. So what the conclusion is is that we have to rely on our community and our our neighborhood people who know each other to to really uh, to deal with these kinds of things. Okay. It's it's a fascinating book, uh, and uh, in, in fact, the, all of your stuff is fascinating. If we get a chance uh, before this at the end of this segment, I'll come back and there's some other things that I, I talk about. Uh, but anyway, want to make sure people know how to get in touch with you and, and get to your your uh, uh, your other books and how they can buy the books. But anyway, okay. Now I've read a number of your books, and they are all they are really fascinating. And as I read them. I thought, how does this guy know all of these things? So the question now is, how much of your background can we talk about without you having to shoot me or uh, having? I'll I'll tell you what I'm not going to say before I shoot you. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. No, it, it's it. This this stuff is not. Uh, I, I haven't given away any state secrets. Okay. Let's put it that way. Right. But you have had uh, a very interesting career, and it appears as though you have been involved in some way with a lot of these uh, these things that occur in, in your books. Otherwise, unless you're making them all up, in which case... I'd be an even better writer, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't think you could be a better writer. But I, I mean, it, so so obviously, some of this is coming from uh, things that have happened to you, or or that you you may not have been involved in them, but but you have been associated with them and realize that there are things that you can bring to these books. Yes. Okay. We'll say that. I mean, there's, there's the, the involvement part. If you Let's put it this way. Okay. You're going to go back to the football game, right? Okay. You can be a player. You can be a spectator. Right. If you're a player, you have a different you have a different perspective. But as a spectator, you can still see what's going on. Okay. All right. So right. I didn't necessarily always get on the field, but I had the opportunity to watch. Okay. Okay. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, no. I, I actually I, I told Sebastian the story. I hope I don't get the FBI guy in trouble. I won't. Bet you a lot, but uh, several years ago, we had a, an FBI, a retired FBI guy, come in, and uh, and he he had written a book that he actually was just going to do for his friends that knew him, to, and then he decided to publish it. And so when we got him on the air, he got terrified because he said uh, people are going to know who I am, uh, even though he was using a, a you know a f- fake name. Uh, and if they find out, I'm going to lose my pension. Mm-hmm. I said, well, that's the last thing that we wanted to do. And, and as it turned out, the, the, it was a terrible interview because he wouldn't tell us anything. <laughs> now we've got a guy who's, who is telling us, and we hope that you don't lose your pension. Okay. Now, uh, I, I also have this thing, I, and I mentioned this uh, to Sebastian. I have two of my favorite authors um, are uh, uh, Leon Uris and Herman Woke, And they both have this one um, technique of... The, the plot carries the book, but there are little vignettes that are not really part of the plot. And you do the same thing. I mean, there is a plot, there is a, a point in, uh, in the book uh, Serenity that takes place towards the end of the book, and it takes place at Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's really a nice section. I mean, it's Harold's back, and he's can, and it, you start reading and say, boy, and all of a sudden, bang, you're hit with this, this, Thing that you, you never saw coming. What, what happens is in real life. That's I mean, to me, I want to write about real things, right? Okay, about real life, and yeah, you can you can be involved in these kinds of things, and you you still get to go home at Thanksgiving, and you get to teach your little sister how to fish, right? And if you remember, at the end of that, you're sitting, you're having a great time at Thanksgiving, you're helping the homeless, you're doing all these wonderful things, and then. Operation Desert Fox happens, and <laughs> right. so right. And, and so you're right, you pulled right back into it. But to me, those kinds of things add realism. They add depth of character. They make um, they make the book believable, right? As opposed to, uh, like I put on the back cover, you know, the the spy who jumps out of the airplane at eighty thousand feet on a surfboard, right? <laughs> the, 
doesn't happen. <laughs> no, right. No, and and actually, that's one of the things that I love about your books. They are believable, and and as you, and as you read it, uh, you're kind of pulled into this into the the life of these people, and they're all a little bit different, and they all have they they get together at uh, at times, and then they are suddenly apart. Um, and there's there's I'm gonna say this because I know you will it, you're not gonna answer, but but <laughs> I, I, but I. I absolutely loved the. Uh, uh, there's a woman that Amber, that uh, by the name of Amber, comes into the book. Yeah. Into the book we just talked about, now, uh, Serenity. And uh, I thought, man, this is one of the great characters of all time. At the end of the book, I don't know what happened to her, and you're not going to tell me. I know. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. But, but that's again, that's the way it happens. I mean, from my own personal experience. Yeah. There were people who, when I was in the service. Or even when I worked as a consultant, who I had a very close and tight relationship with for six, eight months. Okay. Never saw him again. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because life pulls us together and life pulls, pulls us apart. apart. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into, because um, there are a lot of women. In, in, in the I like women. Book. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they make, and the characters are really, really good. The one thing I noticed is you really don't have any um, sexy sex scenes in, in, in the book. I mean, there, there are, you know, there are scenes with the people, but you really don't get involved with, with the sex part of it. It's that other than, you know, there's been a lot. In, in this series, the, the fact that someone has a relationship with someone is important. The details of what goes on in that 30 minutes or 45 minutes are not important. Right. Okay. So all of my sex scenes are implicit. Okay. Usually, well, they kiss thirty minutes later. You know, okay. <laughs> that's all you need. That's, that's all you need. Well, it's, but I do have some in some of my other books. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's uh, another funny story. But we have a guy. This guy actually was uh, not FBI. I think he was CIA. He did a number of books, and uh, he said he had a lot of sexy scenes in there. And he finally got to the point. He said, "You know, there's only so many ways that you can depict the sex uh, uh, event." And and I'm tired of it. I you know I I can't yeah. keep repeating the same thing. What you do is is different. It's just enough. And and you as a guy you fall in love with these women characters. Now speaking of which, I had a woman. Uh, this is a true story. Uh, who did a book and there she fell in love with her character. Uh, that, that for and she married a woman. You know married nice woman. Married and and then the book came to an end. And she said it was like going through a divorce. I mean, she actually got so depressed, and that, uh, she, and her husband was upset with her because he said, "You know, you got to." Yeah. Do you ever get through go through that with your characters? Not necessarily with just the women, but that you know that something happens. That... No, I don't think I've gone there yet. I, you know, <laughs> okay. I, if if you look closely at the at the women in the book in the books, they're they're all pretty strong women. I okay. like strong, intelligent women. Yeah. And some of them are pretty sexy, and some of them are kind of bland, but but they're all strong. That, yeah. To me, that's the the most important thing. But no, I've never fallen in love with a character. Okay, and they don't they don't talk to you. I didn't say that. <laughs> they do talk to you. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. I mean, because really, the process of writing is you invent this strong character that you can relate to. Right. And then that character in a particular situation, if you write something that they wouldn't have done or wouldn't have said. You know that your character will slap you and say, "I wouldn't say that." <laughs> okay. And so they kind of they do take on a life because okay. you gave it to them, and 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 if you if they do something that's out of their character, you better give them a reason. Okay. We we once had a guy very early on. In fact, I think he was the first guy we interviewed. This is eight years ago now, uh, and, he, and he's a cop. And uh, he came on, and we did the thing. And then after it was over, his girlfriend was with him. And said, this guy drives me crazy because he wakes me up in the middle of the night. And she said, where are you going? He said, so one of my characters is talking to me. And he was going out to write. Uh, and I said, you should have told me that before. I could have. Does that happen to you? Um, you get inspiration in the oddest places at the oddest times. Yeah. I think my character is talking to me is probably a euphemism for I just had a great thought. Okay. You know. Right. Okay. But but it does happen all the time. I keep a pad by my, you know, by Your my bed? bed. Yeah, okay. I keep a pad by the television. <laughs> I keep a pad everywhere. 
right? Uh, because you'll you and it had happened just the other day. You, you, I've got a book that I'm almost done with, and your subconscious is still working on it, right? And I'm going, oh, I could make it better if, and I add just a sentence that says, I need to have this character do this, okay? And I can go back and add a paragraph later, and it makes the whole thing stronger, okay. Also, your research is terrific. So how long does it take you to, to write a book? Um, depends on the book. Okay. Um, uh, this one here, uh, Serenity, I probably wrote in two months. Okay. Because a lot of it I drew from personal experience. Okay. Um, the longest book I wrote was 217,000 words, and it's the last one in here. And that took me probably five months. Okay. But the one I'm working on now, and I had personal experience with that one, but the one I'm working on now has taken me eight months, and I'm only a little over halfway through it. Oh, wow. Because, because it's about a woman who was raped. Oh, okay. I don't have any experience with that. Right. So okay. I have to do a lot more work to find in okay. order to – I can't draw on anything I already know. Okay. And so it, it really depends on – um, on, on what you're trying to write about and how much it relates to stuff you already have in your head. Okay. Um, the uh, witness protection uh, program, do you, I mean, you obviously seem to know quite a bit. I don't think you're in it, but, well, maybe you are. I don't maybe know. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, but you seem to have an awful lot of information about that program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your point? I told, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I won't carry it any further than that. I don't, I don't think I don't think anybody doesn't have a lot of information about it. Basically, somebody has to disappear. Right. Okay. Okay. So what are the what are the things that have to happen? Yeah. You know, name change, social security change, all your friends go away or go with you. One of the right. two. Uh, it's 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 pretty straightforward operation. Okay. So it doesn't take a lot to imagine what it would entail. Okay. Now the locales. You've been. You've got a lot of places in these books, and in fact, a, a whole ton of. Them. Have you been to all these places? I haven't been to all the places, but I've been to similar places to all these places. Okay. 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 So if you're, um, for example, the in 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 uh, book three, uh, trip to Merida. Right. Um, that we're, guys are walking through the jungle of the Yucatan. Right. Haven't been in the jungle of the Yucatan, okay. but I've been in the jungles of Belize. Okay. Which is right across the, the border. Right. So. Right. You can do that. Okay. All right. How much – you were in the military, obviously, for uh -huh. years. How, how, how long? Six years. Six. That's it? That's it. Okay. And and what branch? Or Navy. You, Navy. Okay. All right. A now, naval intelligence officer, uh, just, like, uh, just like Chance Inman. Okay. Is, <laughs> uh, is uh, he patterned after you? Chance? No. Uh, but the characters are usually a combination of different people. Right. So I got his name from from people whom I respect greatly. Two different people, not the same guy. Right. And I'm you know, I'm not going to say who, but but both of them. Uh, uh, one guy I was in boot camp with. Okay. And uh, but but fine people, and I and I have a tendency to do that. Yeah. There are people whom I respect uh, tremendously, and and they get to be the good guys. Right. The okay. bad guys are just made up. Okay. Uh, th I want I want to ask you about. You have a a book now that's uh, that you. Basically, when I say not pushing, but you're kind of giving away on the uh, uh, on the net, and this is Eva. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about well, that? Well, Eva is the one about the woman who gets raped. Oh, okay. And okay. what I'm doing is I'm I'm publishing it a chapter at a time as I go. Right. And and it, and it helps because people write back, and I get a little feedback. Right. So when it's done, the chapters that went out as part of the serial probably will look a little bit differently. Okay. But Eva is the story of a <clears throat> uh, a woman from Cuba in 1960 who flees Cuba with her husband to get away from Castro and Che. Right. Okay. And and she gets raped on the way, and um, and then is eventually separated from her husband. So they don't know they're they're both alive, but neither one of them knows the other one's alive. Okay. They both get to the United States, and the, the story is mostly about Eva and how she deals with all of these pressures, the okay. pressure of being pregnant and the pressure of not knowing whether her husband's alive and things like that. How, where did this idea come from? I mean, it, I mean, you, these are all different ideas, incidentally. I haven't found any of these that are the same idea. 
Uh, I mean, you, you, I mean, you You, know, you, you trying to say I'm not a formulaic writer. (laughs) That's for sure. That's for sure. Which is great. So, but, but I mean, has this come out of your head or, uh, well, I'm not plagiarizing the whole thing. Oh, no, 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 no. no, We know that. No, 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 no. I know that for sure. If you, it's, it comes from, I think it comes from a combination of having an active imagination and, and being a good BSer. Can I say BSer on that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. And so, I mean, any good Navy guy can tell a story. Right. So if you, if you do what I said before, you have, you have an interesting character and you're a, a good BSer and you can do research to back up what you want to happen, you can pretty much spin a yarn. Okay. Where the idea for this one came from is I started a book called The Refugee's Daughter. Okay. And it was going to be about the, the, the daughter who was actually born of this and all of my, my readers who were reading The Refugee's Daughter said, well, we don't want to know about The Refugee's Daughter. We want to know what happened to The Refugee. <laughs> right. Okay. How did this happen? Right. So okay. then I went back and I said, all right, got to tell this story before I can tell the tell other the story. Tell the other story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many books do you have? Well, for, let, me, let me go back for a minute. Somewhere along the line, you suddenly realized that you had a talent for writing. I don't know. That'll be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You ha- you have a talent. There's no question. You must have known it because this this just didn't appear. I mean, I have people that uh, that I have read, and you think, my God, you know, don't don't quit your day day, day job. Uh, you're you're you write extremely well, and the and the uh, plots are terrific and really well done. Thank you. So that that when did you know that? Um. I knew I wanted to write uh, probably in high school. Oh, okay. But what happened was I had other careers, and right. as a naval intelligence officer and then later as a consulting ecologist, you do a lot of writing. It's a different kind of writing. Okay. But you still have the, the single process of you have to put sentences together into paragraphs. Right. And as you put your paragraphs together, you have to take a person, whether it's an admiral or a county commissioner or a client or whatever, you have to take that person's brain – from wherever it's starting, and bring it to the ending that you want. And that's the same process with creative writing. Okay. All right? Okay. So if I get if I want to tell a story that's that that has uh, some ending or whatever, I just need to find a place to start and then, and then move through it. Okay. I, I, I got to get into the nuts oh, okay. and bolts here, so because if we have a chance, it'll come back. But I, first of all, how do they get hold of the books? Because if, if please, if you haven't read one of his books, get one and read it, and you'll be a fan forever. But how do they do that? Well, they, they're, they're, there's a couple of ways. The easiest way to see what's available is to go to, I have an Amazon author's page, okay, and you'll see what's there. Okay. I also have a website, but the website is registered under my partner's name, which is okay. TomCuba.net. Okay. But because everybody is now hearing Sebastian Roberts bandied about, right. my Facebook page, which is Sebastian Roberts, Novelist, okay. has links to everything. Okay. So that's the easiest portal is to go there. Okay. Now, and that is that is really important, folks. Get on this website, and you, you there's a list of all of your books, and I think there's uh, some information on all of them. Yeah, the, yeah. the electronic books are available through, at, in Nook or Kindle formats okay. through those websites. The hard copy or the printed books, you have to order directly from me. Okay. What's next? What's next? Yeah. I want to finish EVA. Okay, okay. And, and, and you want me to write about Amber. <laughs> so, so, but Amber's, Amber's got a good story. Um, I do have, this, this story here was about, uh, about Harold in his 20s. Right. And then uh, I do have a manuscript that's in final preparation now, which is about Valerie in her okay. 20s. Okay. So if I do them, then I really owe it to Janice to do one about her. <laughs> and in her 20s, she's an, she's an Air Force officer. Okay. okay, so right. I, I haven't decided exactly what she's going to be doing in the Air Force, but that's where she's at. That's oh. why they can't, you know, be together is because she's drawn away. Okay. One thing when you get this, the last line of this book, uh, the book that we have with we Serenity, is just mind-blowing. Anyway, uh, we have been talking to Sebastian Roberts, and folks, he's a terrific writer, He's got all kinds of books that will keep you really entertained. Please, please start reading that man's books. Thank you. Thank you. And join us again next Tuesday at noon for the next edition 
of the book club. <laughs>